transform your scene using After Effects and some AI tools. If you're still doing your VFX compositing only in After Effects, then you're missing out. I'm going to show you how to create composites like this using Nano Banana Pro and Kling's newest O1 model. Let's dive into it. You ever lose hours of work from one bad click? Yeah, happens to everyone. Try using Wondershare Recover V14, an AI-powered Mac recovery tool for creators. AI-powered device recognition and faster scanning allows you to find your files in just a few clicks. With Mac OS 26 and Apple's exclusive codec recovery, it brings back Final Cut Pro projects, Photoshop, or Logic Pro fully intact. It also includes AI-enhanced repair for damaged files. Recover it is your creative lifesaver for deadlines and passion projects. No stress, no data loss. Visit the link below and try Recover It V14 today. All right, I have a clip here of my subject walking down a field, and my goal is to replace this background that's in front of him and maybe add some more elements along the way. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my clip. And I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna select the rotor brush tool. And you see the little green circle. If I hold the command key and I move my cursor, it'll make the size change of my brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my subject as best I can in this first frame here. It did a pretty okay job. I'm gonna make my brush size smaller and I'm gonna remove parts of this. So I'll go ahead and make some more fine tune adjustments. I'm not too worried about the, the legs here because again, I'm only kind of replacing the background that's in front of him. So it's really just kind of his torso and his head that I'm worried about. But nonetheless, I'm going to actually try to get a clean roto here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And you see his hairs kind of don't get included here. So to fix that, I'm going to go over to my refine edge tool, or I could just hit option W to switch between the two. You see the color changes of my cursor and make this a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna use my refine edge tool to kind of go over his hairs here. If I go switch over to the alpha overlay tool, you see it selects all these hairs here. And you could do this with other spots too. Like here, you see there's a little bit, bit of a gap between his torso and his arm. So I'm actually just going to go over this with the refine edge tool. And this is just gonna soften the edges. So it just doesn't look so harsh. That looks pretty good. And I could do the same thing with just kind of the edge of his torso to kind of blend it a little bit better. I like the refine edge tool because it gives you a little bit more flexibility with the edge. If you want to soften it, if you want to change it, if you want to add smoothness to it, it allows you to. So that's why I like using it pretty much on every roto that I do. Okay, so I'm going back to my alpha overlay. That looks really good. And if you wanted to, you could actually adjust it so if I go over to my base refine edge radius, and let's say I wanted to increase it, you see how the pink just kind of takes over? That's because I increased it quite a bit. So I'm just gonna undo that, and I could increase it a little bit just to give my edge a little bit more. And here under refine edge mat, like I mentioned, you could actually change the smoothness. You could add a little bit of feather to it and contrast. And if there's a lot of chatter, if there's a lot of like flickering in your roto, you could change this to smoother or more detailed. And again, if your subject is kind of running or moving his hands a lot, you could actually check use motion blur. So I'm going to select that even though, you know, it's a handheld shot. So there's not a lot of motion blur because the camera's following him, but I'm going to select that anyway, just to be safe. And I'll preview my roto here. All right, so my roto seems to have picked up pretty well. I'm happy with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the freeze button and the freeze tool just basically freezes your roto in place so your timeline doesn't have to propagate every time you kind of jump around. So another way you could speed up your After Effects after your rotoscope so you can kind of do your compositing without your computer lagging, I like to actually just pre-render and I make sure my output module is lossless with alpha. You can output it as an alpha channel, so that'll speed it up quite a bit. Okay, so then once my alpha channel is ready to go, I'll import that back into my sequence, bring it into my composition, and I'm just going to hide my roto layer. Now, if you look at this in the render time here, 
you see right here for my roto layer, it's rendering at 1.6 seconds versus pretty much zero milliseconds for the alpha subject. So that's going to save me a lot of time throughout the course of my, you know, composition. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. That looks really good. Again, I said the bottom, I don't need to worry about too much. It's flickering a little bit just because the grass is really hard to rotoscope. The grass kind of covers some of his boots there, but overall his top part looks really good and I'm happy with it. So we're gonna move forward. Make sure I have my background layer here as part of my bottom. So this is my main background layer and this is my alpha layer on top. My roto layer, I'm like I said, I'm gonna hide to get that completely out of the way, I'm gonna click on this little guy. And then up here, I'm gonna click on the guy and this kind of shies away anything that's hidden just so it kind of gets out of the way and you don't have to see it. If I need it, it's there, but I'm gonna leave it hidden for now. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually composite my background using some AI tools. So I'm gonna go to composition, save frame as file and exporting that as a PSD. Okay, so I have my PSD opened up in Photoshop. I'm just gonna remove my subject just to kind of get it out of the way so I can just focus mainly on my background. So I'm gonna click select subject. I'm gonna expand this about 10 pixels and I'm gonna hit delete and then click on generative fill and just hit generate. All right, so that looks pretty good. Right there, I'm gonna click on merge visible so it's just a flattened layer. And from here, I could actually just select my background and I could click on generative fill and I could just use Firefly to change my background. But since I'm a little bit picky, I'm gonna export this and bring this into Gemini to use Nano Banana Pro. I'm in Gemini, I'm using Nano Banana Pro. I'm gonna add my file. So I'm gonna upload my background. This is my clean plate. I'm gonna upload that. All right, so I'm gonna add my prompt here. It's pretty detailed and we'll see what Nano Banana Pro can come up with. Okay, so this is what the image was that Gemini and Nano Banana Pro pumped out. This is really good, I'm super excited about that. I'm gonna go to Hail UO and I'm gonna upload my image. And I got my prompt here. And what I wanna do is, even though the shot is a handheld moving shot, I basically want the shot to be static so I could emulate the movement of this camera. So I'm actually going to click on this little camera icon. This is why I'm using Hail UO because it allows you to change the shot type. So I'm gonna make sure this is a static shot and I'm gonna create it. And here's a result of the static shot. So now I have my clip that's a static shot and I wanna blend it in with my scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my mask tool and I'm just gonna do a rough mask around the top of the frame here. And I'm just gonna adjust this so it's kind of right around the horizon. Something like that. We see that the color temperature needs to change. So I'm gonna go to my Lumetri color, drag that on there. And I'm gonna bring this to about, let's say negative 40. Let's bring the exposure up a little bit. Contrast. Okay, so I'm gonna add a Lumetri color effect to this and I'm gonna make some adjustments. And I'll double check my Lumetri scope to just make sure that these two frames blend in nicely. So if I kind of hide this, you can see maybe I want to go a little bit more up. So they kind of overlap on this vector scope here a little bit. And in terms of the contrast, that looks good. Okay, so now the scenes kind of blend in a little bit better. I'm gonna hit the F key and I'm gonna feather my mask quite a bit. I'll make some slight adjustments to it. That looks pretty good. So if this is my first frame, I'm obviously I'm not gonna worry about my subject because he's gonna be in the foreground there. So overall for a first frame, that looks really good. So I'm gonna keep that. And the next thing I gotta do is actually just track my footage. So I'm gonna isolate my bottom layer here and I'm gonna to go to Animation, Track, and Boris FX Mocha. Since this is kind of a planar track, meaning the background doesn't really change that much, just in terms of like size and position, I'm gonna use Mocha versus the 3D camera track. So I'm gonna take my XSpline tool here, 
and I'm just gonna select a big portion of the background here like that. I'll click on show surface and align surface to match up with the proportions of my clip and I'll track forward. Okay, that looks really good. I'm gonna save that and close out of Mocha and I'm gonna bring all my other layers back and I'm gonna take my background and I'm actually going to pre-compose it, move all attributes into the new composition. So this way, this pre-comp kind of matches the proportions of my clip. We'll go back to my Mocha settings and I'll drop down the tracking data and I'll click on create track data. And under layer export to, I'll select my final 4K background pre-comp and I'll click apply export. And you see the background blends in almost seamlessly with my track. Pretty amazing stuff. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is actually add some elements into my field here. And since it's a 3D tracked scene, I basically need to either import some GLB and some actual 3D layers and do some more tracking and whatnot, or I could actually use a really well-trained AI model, which luckily for me, Kling AI just came out with Kling 01, which actually nails this perfectly. But before I do that, I'm gonna go over to my Nano Banana Pro you could use this with any other image model, which basically I took a screenshot of my final comp and I basically had it composite some different elements throughout the shot. And then I took that, brought it into Kling using the 01 model and I uploaded the image that I wanted to composite. So I did video one, man walks through a field an apocalyptic battlefield with scattered junk around the field as shown in image one. And then I generated that and this is what it came up with. So this basically would have taken me, you know, hours, if not days to match the color correction, getting the compositing perfectly, you know, so this is a really good option when you're kind of almost done with your shot and you just need to polish it a little bit more. And here's the final result.